Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. Thumbs up for that. Welcome to a brand new day of not just trying to find weird places to put and aim my tablet, but also the challenge is to make it compositionally interesting and also balanced. Having everything on one side is compositionally unbalanced, and especially with my neurospiciness, I do not like asymmetry. Which is weird considering I've got the asymmetrical haircut going on. All my life, I have had like shoulder length ish hair, long ish hair, except for brief periods of time when it was cut shorter for this reason or that. So, the fact that my hair's gotten so thin that I have to cut it so short is new and weird for me. So, after playing it safe after the death of my wife, I've just decided to not play it safe. And so, the trimming it down to one millimeter on this side now and so hey thumbs up <laughs> anyway though i am freshly showered this morning my clothes were washed over the weekend i still have to change the sheets on my bed and readjust the mattress unfortunately because of the fact that i need memory foam and i couldn't get a memory foam mattress i had to get two memory foam toppers but because they're made out of foam and they're just sitting on top of each other, even though they're foam and cling, they still move as I move. And so I start them off perfectly flat and then they start going like this. And so I've got to readjust them flat again. <sighs> Thumbs up for that. Past that, <coughs> excuse me, I dragged one of my fans from the storage unit to here. So I've got one of the big box fans. Uh, they're cheap, so they're not like big, big industrial box fans. They're just box fans. But I got one there. And turning off the heat entirely, as I've been doing, and then having the fan on, I slept. I wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. My feet didn't want, feet, my legs didn't want to cramp up. That was very, very good. So getting the fan was definitely a good idea. Thumbs up for that. And past that, I haven't played a computer game for uh, a, a longer than I like. And that's bothersome for me. Nor, since the last time I played Final Girl and then tried to play Iron Helm, have I been able to play any of my solo RPG stuff, which I really want to do. And again, as I talked with my therapist about, and I probably mentioned it here, I mean, I'm 61 years old, and traditionally 61-year-old men don't do things like uh, collect plushies and have, you know, play computer games. I mean, they couldn't in the past, but minus the computer games, don't play the solo RPG game stuff. Don't do the sort of things that I've been doing. But I'm not a neuro, I just, just I'm not neurotypical, nor am I just a typical guy. So I've just never done the the standard things that guys do, and then especially since with the abuse that I had as a child, leading into my alcoholism as a young adult, leading into the trauma of watching my wife die in front of me as an older adult, to trying to survive after the death of my wife. Which is not easy. The stats on people in my situation are not good. I mean, now I'm doing a lot better. But for the first couple years after what happens to me, sudden death of a spouse like this, I mean, even though it was a long, slow decline over a decade, she still went. The survival stats for someone is only like 30%. So I had the odds stacked hard against me. 70% chance I wasn't going to survive. But I did. So, thumbs up. 
I'm glad I did survive. I never thought that I'd end up in the situation that I am now, but I am, so yay. But as non-typical as I may be, and more typical now than this sort of activity was when I was younger, it's never been completely off the table. Even when I was in the Air Force, even when I was in Germany in the 80s, there were still people that were about my age who were going to the tables to play. Because after all, this stuff had only really happened in the 70s, so if it only sparked your, your imagination some 10 years back and you were 60, yeah, you'd be going out and trying to do this stuff with people. So, yeah, it's not just a young person's thing, nor is it all just non-typical. But, yay. But I had been trying to do the things that I couldn't do when I was younger, which is play. So I collect plush stuff and these $45 things and these things from 7-Eleven. You know, and I, I get the, the board games and I'm getting the the solo RPG things and I'm playing these things engaging in play and that's a good thing so thumbs up on that yay there's a lot of rattling and banging outside I have my windows open for ventilation even though I have the shade shut so there's a lot of noise that comes in hopefully not too much of my voice heading back out there <laughs> or social anxieties for the wind so yay Still though, past that, the only real thing I've got to talk about, well, I mean this one, people have asked about this one with your eyes, and I need my, I need prescription glasses, and the irritating thing right this is, uh, human bodies don't just stop, and I have gotten older since somebody was kind enough to pay for <coughs> both prescriptions and glasses for me. I went to use my bifocals so that I could read some small text on something and I couldn't read it out of the right eye anymore and I had to squint to be able to use the bifocal part down on this side so my eyes have gotten bad enough that I I can't even really use those so yay on the other hand it's cheap enough that, you know, at two months I should be able to save up and be able to get the examination and glasses. So we shall see what happens there. On another <coughs> just side front, talking on the whole uh, writing fiction part. Now, I was talking with someone in comments where I don't know how uh, serious they are being. Because we're talking about snake horror stories. But I wrote three long paragraph comments. And the first comment was fine. And so I put in a second long comment. And then I wrote in a third comment. And then when I hit the reply button, all three comments vanished. And I mean vanished. They didn't go into any of the places where messages go if it's for review. No, all three of my comments just vanished. And I, yay for YouTube. <sighs> so I'm gonna try and talk some about this. Again, I don't know how serious you are being in the comments, but I'm gonna talk about this anyway, because hey, why not? As, as well, again, I don't know if what showed up and what got lost, but I have no shame. So, my real issue is, is with Trump is I have tried to force writing stories my whole life. It has never worked. Even as I've tried to dabble and keep my, you know, dip my toes in and try to still, you know, call myself a writer by trying to write something. Try to remember where I was going with this. I, and I can't. It is got well. No, I've need. I've tried to force it. I tried to force the plot point. Sorry about that. I hate having ADHD. I've tried to force it. I've never been able to, and it my work has struggled because of that. And so it has also colored how I look 
at writing because I've been beating my head against the wall even though it was the kind of glasses I was looking through that was causing me to beat my head against the wall now just walking on the path that'll lead up to this area makes me go I'm a little leery of this even though this way walks to the head beating this way walks around it I still get nervous hitting around here so I have tried to force my fiction. It has never worked. Only now, when I just started letting my creativity run free over these past couple of years, when I've, that this whole inside, outside, razor's edge, encrypted stuff has just exploded. And none of this is stuff that I've said, I want to do this. This has been my subconscious going, hey, let's think about this. And then following it where it goes, while my subconscious just goes, hey, 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 along the way. So, trying to write any sort of story other than how many people can we shovel down into hungry snake stomachs, you know, is going to be trying to force the issue for me. And that sucks. I hate that forcing the issue thing now that I've let it go. So even though I've walked the path and I could just let the creativity go, just go, okay, I've got five young gals here and I want them inside of snake stomachs over here being digested. You know, I could just come up with something easy enough as a plot to get them all shoveled down into stomachs. But that whole plotting thing and having forced it. So I had written down that even though I've been avoiding this sort of thing because of the whole plotting issue, because I have been avoiding it. One of the things I did when I was younger, decades ago, when I was first still able to write before my alcoholism killed that, was I realized that dialogue was difficult for me and I wanted to avoid it. Because I wanted to avoid it, I knew I would never get better at it. So I started forcing myself into dialogue situations. And because I kept forcing myself into dialogue situations, dialogue got to be pretty easy and pretty natural. So, because it's a thing I've been avoiding, I am going to, as a writing exercise, <laughs> just try to come up with X number of people, X number of hungry stomachs, and how can I quickly shovel these people into these stomachs? Now, of course, I'm going to talk about going into another subject, but still having, you know, lots and lots of human beings being devoured, my cryptid stories. Because I have an admitted vor kink slash fetish, I want my cryptid stuff to be far away from that. I don't want any of that involved with my stories. I personally do not like pain. I do not like blood. I do not like things like chewing. Ugh, all those things. I find extremely unpleasant. If I am going to be, you know, trying to think of something in a kink slash fetish fashion, I like to have musty, top-heavy young women swallowed whole, then digested alive. So, I get nowhere near that in my stories. My cryptids like to eat people, human flesh. There's a whole bunch of stories on reasons why, and I'll go and try to get it all into one big thing one day. Far off in the future, so I can keep not worrying about it. But they love to eat human meat, and they can devour an entire human being, but they bite and chew and tear and there is blood and other bodily fluids because they are biting and ripping and then chewing and swallowing and yeah there is pain because they don't kill you and then eat your body they kill you by eating you because as you bite out baseball sized chunks of meat from your body eventually blood loss and stuff is well you're not going to be living anymore, are you? So why should they go through the trouble? They can't make the conceptual leap of 
let's let's try not to cause excessive suffering so all the things that I like that does not happen in my cryptid stories and all the stuff that I actively hate is what happens in the stories to try and keep and maintain that difference between the two because as I've mentioned you know Polly at five foot six 120 pounds soaking wet she can easily and comfortably devour bodily entirely and completely a 250 pound human being and it takes a while and there's a lot of screaming and a lot of thrashing and a lot of blood a lot of pain a lot of suffering it is nothing it is horrific i love my cryptids but the things that I make them do make me hate my cryptids. Thumbs up for that. So past that, I've still just got my notebooks filled with solo RPG stuff. And I'm going to be working on playing those sort of things. I want to play for myself and for the channel more NoteQuest Extended World. I also want to make up a world. Make up a world on the channel and then have the game take place in that world. You can still go hex crawling and have a world that you have created and have the individuals not know what's happening in the world. You will know, of course, you have to be player and game master. And unless you're just going to create the world as you play, which is perfectly valid, and I've even done that rudimentary system in the NoteQuest Expanded World, where you create the hex crawl map as you go, you know, there's all sorts of ways to do it. So I'm hoping to do it both for myself and for the channel. Right now, I'm still dealing with a lot of stress from the holidays. And even, it's been about, what, two months now? I got here November 16th, so October 16th, well, month and a half I've been here. So I pretty much settled in here. I'm getting used to the people which is a thing that I have to deal with with my anxieties. And so I've been trying my best to interact. I can't deal a lot and I need, still need to explain to them that, and I tweeted about this, you know, I'm only been going to be able to paraphrase and not paraphrase well, but it's like, you know, it's I'm not standoffish and weird. And I want to explain to my, all of my neighbors that, you know, the, the reason that I seem standoffish and weird is because I'm standoffish and weird, but my standoffishness and weirdness makes it so hard to explain that I'm standoffish and weird, and then it all falls apart as a scenario inside of my head, so... But I have been talking, and I have been trying to interact as much as I can before my people meter fills up and I have to run back inside here and escape. Because as I was talking with one of the people here, you know, as much as I, well, for everybody, these are nice little places, but they're little places. And if you spend too much time inside of one of these little places by yourself, you're gonna be hearing your thoughts bouncing off the walls pretty soon. So yeah, I try to get out. Ugh. I mean, last night I got out, finally. It's happening at night again, but right now, it is so dark and gray all day. Thumbs up. So, as stated, I'm going to try and play both my physical stuff and my solo stuff, well, the solo notebook stuff, the solo PDS stuff, some of the board game stuff that I have. There are board games I still want to order and there are expansions I want to order. I was looking into some solo board gaming things. One of them is like, I think it's called Under Falling Skies. And it is like playing almost a Space Invaders type game, except more because you have a grid where the bad guys are coming down toward you and you've got to shoot them down before they get you down here. That looks pretty good and it's gotten pretty good reviews. 
So I want to do that sort of thing. I want to write stories. Now, still, now I'm not going to be able to do much because of executive function and executive dysfunction issues. But if I can write a paragraph or two at the very least, I got my toe in the puddle at the very, at the very least, to use the phrase again. Uh, as a writer, I hate doing that. You know, I don't have to write stories about shoveling people into hundred hungry stomachs, though I really want to. But I, as long as it's something about anything, with some sort of practice, even if I, I spend it like a paragraph describing an apple, that's an exercise, a writing exercise. So, I'm going to go walking, I'm going to go working on things, and hopefully you're going to go working on things, and thank you each and every one of my Patreon patrons that are not up here on the screen, because I'm not there yet, but I will be soon. But until we get there, thank you each and one of my Patreon patrons who are beautiful and awesome people. You know who you are, and you are beautiful, and you are awesome. Thank you. For everybody that leaves me comments, thank you so very much. And whether you're serious or not, and with my neurodivergence, I can't tell. And in text, it's even harder. You know, I, I'm taking into face value that you're serious about the snake lore stories talking stuff. Now, I'll talk, I'll spend hours talking about this sort of thing because I will spend you know, I will info dump and just geek out on things in a neurodivergent way for hours. Just give me the opportunity. Thumbs up for that. Anyway, though, so until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is indeed a very good thing. And then even though I got this in my hand, you know, I'm not actually going to use it because through the power of editing, I'm going to go like this.